See how it's this gooey, cracked up, dried up clay that's halfway coming back into paint? Just clay. You can take it and you can smear it on your furniture. What if we're living in a fantasy? This piece had a lot of chippy paint and bumps, and I did not want to sand it down. So I decided to go with a heavy texturized finish. A hidden land for you and me. I am going to take this and I am going to create an old world built up amazing texture with the clay. I'm just going to smush it in. Imagination is the only rule. DIY paint is just nine non-toxic ingredients and it can be reconstituted with water. Which means if your paint completely dries out, you can add water to it and bring it back. Sometimes our feet float off the ground. If you watched my last video, you saw me creating this piece of furniture right back here. I saw this artist on Instagram. Her name is With Love Furniture. I'm gonna link her channel down in the description box. She was doing this very cool technique. I thought, I could do that and I basically ruined my piece of furniture, ended up having to sand the whole thing down, completely start over. Found this for $80 on Facebook Marketplace, but it needed a lot of love. Started by mixing Petticoat Pink with Kissing Booth, Liquid Sunshine, and Cowgirl Coral to create a very warm pink color. I applied this mixture to the top half of my dresser, sort of sketching out my pattern with my paintbrush so I would know where the molds would go to divide the dresser in half later. See how chipped up the paint is. Rather than sand all that down, I decided to use it to enhance my textured look. I don't know what she thinks about me copying her idea. She made a comment on the last video. And she was very friendly and very welcoming. So I am going to attempt to do her technique again. For all of you who didn't see what she was doing, I'm gonna show you right now. This is not the piece that I am trying to copy today, but this is her furniture. Look at that. You should definitely go follow her. See how she divided the two colors with the molds right there? And look at her cute dog too. I also saw this piece right here. It's Renevel by Velma. I found her on Etsy. I always think that if you're inspired by somebody and you can, you should give them the credit. I mixed Old 57 with crinoline and painted it on the bottom half of the piece. And then Bobby showed up and insisted that there were some areas that were just too chipped up and they needed to be sanded and wood puttied. I think I could have done it without this, but he's probably right. Is it different than wood putty? I do not know. Is it like face filler? I, have you ever had face filler? Not yet. It's like a cake frosting. Okay. It doesn't yeah. taste the same though. Did you try it? Finally, I like to build it up a little higher than I need it and then you sand it. Because there's no veneer. The veneer's peeling. I think you could also peel the veneer off too. I tried peeling a veneer once and it was horrifying. Yeah, in this case, because this is so old. It just, it's smooth, it just doesn't look like it. It looks like a bird. Look, there's a beak. There was a time when I used to have a sign up before you ever walked into my store that said, no photos please. And I was very guarded about my ideas. In my early 20s, I was selling these Christmas ornaments and they were very unique. This was before you could go on the internet and see every idea that anyone could ever possibly think of. I felt like I had this secret sauce. Sometimes I would see people trying to take notes or take photographs. I would ask them to please put their cameras away. This was before everybody had a camera on their phone. I was always just eagle eye protective of my ornaments because I did not want anyone to steal my idea. 
After Bobby was finished sanding, I started blending the top portion of the dresser with some sunset colors. And you're probably wondering, what happened to all those bright colors? Well, if you've been watching my channel, you know that I often second guess myself and paint over my work. I did really love how the top half of the dresser turned out, but it just didn't jive with the bottom half. After I was done blending the top half of the dresser, I waited for the paint to dry completely, and then I used the pigments to enhance the contrast. You do this by dipping your paintbrush in water, then dipping it in the pigment powder, and brushing it across the unsealed paint of the dresser. Because DIY paint dries so chalky and it is so absorbent, the pigments will soak right in and they're easy to blend. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I was at a craft show and I was selling my ornaments. I was making them as fast as I could and I was booking as many shows as I could before Christmas was over so that I could make as much money as possible. One day I go to this craft fair. It was kind of a dud. There were hardly any customers. It was out in front of a grocery store. I was the one selling the most that day because it was very quiet. I started to notice the other vendors kind of looking at me like, why is she selling stuff and we're not selling stuff. I had a really cool idea and it was very unique and nobody had ever seen it before. So I could pretty much count on selling a lot no matter where I went. I started to blend the bottom half of the dresser with Kissing Booth and Hey Sailor. Then I started adding lighter blues to the mix. I have a full tutorial with lots of blending techniques. I will link it up above and in the description box. Always static when I try to speak. You want to move your brush in different directions and then straighten out your brush marks in the end. It is a lot easier if you pull the lighter color into the darker color so that the light color doesn't get swallowed up by the heavy pigmentation of DIY paint. There was this woman who had the table right next to me and she had like three church tables, you know, the church tables. She had ornaments too and they were these bread dough ornaments. She had hundreds and hundreds of ornaments. They were filling these tables. Hey, do you want to trade ornaments? I could barely make my ornaments fast enough. The last thing I wanted to do was trade ornaments with her. She was very persistent. She just kept asking me and I did not know how to say no thank you. I am using Floral Anthology by Iron Orchid Design. You can get this on my website and I will put the link below. Cut these transfers up and apply them in whatever pattern you like. The one thing you need to know is that you want to apply them over paint that has been sealed or cured. Paint will dry, but it won't cure right away. So I waited overnight before applying this transfer because I didn't want to put a sealer on it. She just kept asking me. I didn't want to hurt her feelings. I found an ornament and I was gonna let her take one of my ornaments. No, no, pick more ornaments. Because I didn't want the confrontation, I picked out three of her ornaments and she took three of my ornaments and we swapped. Two weeks later, I book a craft show up in Orange County. That is like two hours from San Diego. I go to this elementary school craft fair and I'm setting up my tent and my little brother is with me and it is a busy craft fair. This woman comes up to my tent and she says to me, oh, these are just like the ornaments I saw at the craft show down the street. What do you mean? Nobody makes these ornaments but me. As DIY paint is made mostly of clay, you can reconstitute it even if it has completely dried out. This jar of paint completely dried out and it was hard as a rock. I put water in it and I let it sit for like three weeks because this piece of furniture had a lot of cracks in it. it. Just all kinds of damage to the piece. I do not like to strip things or, or peel off veneer. I am gonna take this and I am gonna create an old world built up amazing texture with the clay. <laughs> At 
this point I realize that I need to paint over the bright portion of the top. So I am randomly smushing clay into the surface, knowing that I'm gonna paint over it later. I should probably tell you that they were like a beach theme. They were seashells and glass balls with sand inside. I questioned her very meticulously. There's this woman and she is selling exactly the same ornaments as you. All I wanted to do was get in my car and go find out who had copied my ornaments. This is before GPS, this is before cell phone, so I had to like write down, I get in my car, I leave my little brother to run my booth, and I'm walking around and I'm going from booth to booth. Who is selling my ornaments? And then I see her. Next thing I did was take Sandy Blonde and pour it onto a paper plate and let it start to thicken up. This took about 20 minutes and it was a lot softer, more like the consistency of frosting. See all that thick stuff on the lid? It's thick paint, but it's it's not lumpy. If you wanna try this super texturized technique, you can still do it, even if you don't have lumpy paint. Pour some out onto a paper plate and you let it dry. 70, 80% dry. It will start to turn back into clay. And then you can do the same thing. You can smear it across your furniture and create this super thick built up texture with it. Find a little spot in the shade. Super thick paint can take a while to dry, so I used my paint dryer to speed up the process. And then I started blending new colors over the top of the dresser. And it is the woman with the bread dough ornaments. She had her same three church tables, but there wasn't a bread dough ornament in sight. It was filled with hundreds of seashell ornaments, and it had only been two weeks. So that means that she had to go home, completely abandon her bread dough situation. I knew what it took to make those ornaments because I had made hundreds of them. She probably made those ornaments from morning till night as fast as she could. Maybe she had her boyfriend helping her because her boyfriend was there and I looked her in the eye all of my shyness was gone what happened to your bread dough ornaments I'm using the olive crest mold and the paper clay to create the dividing border between the top and the bottom of the dresser you want to lightly dust your mold with cornstarch and take it out immediately hey, remind me that I'm young you can allow the molds to dry, then paint them, then glue them into place. Or you can glue them into place while they're wet and paint them after they dry. Both methods have their unique advantages. I'll blow back for more hurricanes. If you wanted to copy my idea, why couldn't you at least buy my ornaments instead of making me trade with you when you knew I didn't want to trade with you only so you could steal my idea? I did not copy your idea. Oh yes you did lady. Two weeks ago you had nothing but bread dough and now you've got seashells galore. I'm gonna have my attorney send you a letter. <laughs> I was like 22 and I did not have an attorney to send her a letter but I just threatened her. Her boyfriend was sitting right there and I had this very strong feeling that she did not like me telling the whole story in front of her boyfriend. I just recapped everything she had done so that her boyfriend would know what kind of woman she was. I am applying the molds with Aileen's tacking glue over the dividing line of the two paint colors. I've been through this a million times. Now I'm starting to lose my mind. Here you see me applying some molds that have already dried and some that have not dried yet. I prefer to apply the molds before they dry because I can bend them and get them to conform to the shape of the furniture. However, the molds are much easier to paint if you do that before you apply them to the furniture. I've gotta stop it. 
before you And then I had to leave and I had to get back to my own booth. After that, there were a few people who copied this idea. And then pretty soon it became a well-known thing and my ornaments became like the bread dough ornaments. They peaked and then they faded away. Then I used Sandy Blonde, French Millinery, and White Swan to blend over all the texture that I had created. I love you, Madeline. I love you, Madeline. I love I just had this attitude for years of don't copy me, don't take any pictures. A few months later, I'm setting up at another craft show. Right behind me is a different woman who had also got on the seashell ornament bandwagon and she had a whole booth filled with ornaments. Oh man, here we go again. I didn't know who she was, so it's not like I could go storming over there and I didn't want to anyway, but I was bummed. I think my favorite part is putting the finishing touches on a piece of furniture. I'm using the gold wax and the pigments to create more depth. The pigments are great because you have so much control over them. I'm using a tiny amount and a little artist paintbrush just to highlight areas that would normally fade into the background. And even though the line looks really strong, you can spray it down with water and wipe it back. This was a big craft fair. This was the craft fair I had done a year before and I had made almost $3,000 in five hours. And this was back in the 80s. I was only selling my ornaments for $5 each. So I had sold a ton of these Christmas ornaments the year before. I'm excited to have another stellar day of sales and there is a woman less than 50 feet away and she's got copies of my ornaments. All day long, I hear customers, oh, there's a woman right behind you that is selling the same exact thing. They were okay, but her bows were smaller than mine and her shells weren't as good as mine. And I just wanted to tell the people, my bows are bigger. But I had to just be like, yes, yeah, I'm aware of that. Thank you very much. The funny thing is though, at the end of the day, even with the competition 50 feet behind me, I actually made more money at that craft show than I did the year before. Then I applied our gold gilding wax to the rest of the molds and started creating more depth by shading the areas where the shadows would normally be with darker paint and I pigment. I believe I'm a man with a heart that's a little offbeat. Between the flesh and the bone, that old devil found a way in me. When the nights grow wild, you can find me with the smoke. From there, I went on to open this store, and I was still very guarded, and I put up the sign, no photographs. <laughs> Now it just feels very conceited to even put that. Customers come into my shop today and they ask if they can take pictures. Please take pictures. I want you to be inspired. And I have done a full, complete turnaround in my attitude. Next thing I did was apply clear wax and decrepit dust to highlight all of that beautiful texture. You apply the wax and before it dries, you immediately add the dust and work it down into all the low spots. And then you wipe off the excess and use more clear wax like an eraser so that you have the contrast. Every day I'm a burden and I gotta behave. Cause your love is a sermon that I gotta start learning by the end of the day. I was tired of living that way and I was tired of always feeling like I needed to protect what was mine. I thought, what if I do the complete opposite? What if I made YouTube videos just sharing all of my ideas, hoping that people copy me? That is basically how my YouTube channel started. The final touch was to add some gold wax and a little piece of the transfer to the center of the cameo mold. This was stuck to the side of the jar. See how it it dries almost like a chunk of hard clay. I want to take this and pulverize it and turn it into dust particles and then add water back and see if I can paint with it again. Maybe I'll do that in the next video. Let me know if you want to see that. We all are thinking, something in the silence speaking. Oh.
I wanna try to understand But if it doesn't feel right On the outside Maybe from the inside I could be your ally Find DIY paint in your area or to sell it in your store or to find anything mentioned in this video Click the link below. Thanks for watching. It ain't hard to see all that's going wrong. I know it's far too easy now to sing sad songs. To sing sad songs.